Could you explain your role in the Kansas City, Missouri School District during the years between 1971 and 1997? Um, for a lot of that time, I, I was a parent. I had children in the school district, uh, three children. Um, uh, starting at about, uh, I guess, 90, uh, excuse me, 70, 76, yeah, um, had children in the school district. Uh, but I also spent uh, a lot of that time was involved as an, as an activist, a, as a community activist uh, around school district issues. Uh, and so between being a parent and activist, that, that's how most of that time was, was spent in that, in that period of time. Well, uh, I think we all know about the, the Jenkins desegregation case, uh, which uh, initiated a process of, uh, of school um, desegregation, right? And um, I was a, um, a student at, at UMKC at the time, so I, I, uh, um, some of my professors were involved in putting together what was called the Pink Plan, uh, the Magnet School Plan. Um, as a, as a uh, parent, uh, my children uh, went to, uh, attended um, uh, Bryant Elementary School, which is uh, over on the west side on Warner Road. And uh, it, was, uh, it was already an integrated school uh, in, in, in that sense, uh, but it, it wasn't a magnet school, it never became a magnet school. But at the time it was a very high performing school and uh, that high performance came about as a result of parent involvement in the schools, um, my, my wife uh, and I were, were very active uh, in the school um, and um, in, the, in the PTA at, the, at that time. And uh, I was also um, active, as I said, as an activist. I was a member of the, the Kansas City chapter of the Black United Front. And uh, we had uh, taken a position that um, rather than spending time and money on attempting to integrate the schools, uh, time and money should be spent on improving the quality of education in the schools. And uh, this was an, uh, a, a position that was not only uh, taken from the uh, Kansas City Black United Front and other organizations in the African American community, many other, not all, organizations in the African American community took that position, but it was also uh, a position that was shared by many of the white parents in the district who uh, lived on the west side of Troost and uh, parents I had gotten to know as a parent at Bryant Elementary School. Um, uh, we saw what parent involvement meant in terms of improving the quality of education. And we also understood that there were many parents who had fled the district, white flight, when uh, from the, the, the late 60s through the 70s uh, when uh, there were various other desegregation efforts at the state level and when the, when the, the Jenkins lawsuit was, was, was filed. Uh, and uh, our position was those parents who had fled the district because they didn't want their children sitting next to black children. And, uh, you know, getting them back wasn't a priority. But those parents who had left the district because of the, the low quality of education of the district. If we improve the quality of the, dis of the education, uh, then those parents would return. So uh, we um, uh, had formed a, an organization. It was um, um, uh, the uh, uh, Committee for Quality Education. And uh, uh, we had a meeting over at uh, Southeast, uh, uh, Southwest, excuse me, Southwest High School which was attended by African-American and, and white parents uh, to discuss uh, with uh, uh, Arthur Benson, the plaintiff's attorney, uh, our, our opinion that integration should not be uh, the, the primary thing or that it shouldn't be the, 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 the thing that we focused on, that we should focus on quality education and, and improving the quality of the education would in fact integrate uh, the schools, bring white parents back who had left the district if they were not also uh, racist and not wanting their children to sit next to black children. Well, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we formed a committee. Uh, the committee was initially formed on the, uh, for parents on the east side of truth, right? Uh, African American parents. But because of my experience with, with parents at Bryant Elementary School, I reached out to them and they joined that effort. I mentioned we had a, 
we had a meeting over at uh, Southwest High School. Uh, Arthur Benson was invited to that meeting and uh, I was um, uh, chosen as someone to basically debate him on this issue. Uh, and the debate was, as I had said before, an issue of whether or not we should focus on quality education as opposed to integration. Uh, Arthur Benson took the point of view that, uh, that integration was the thing we should, we should focus on. And uh, you know, he took the point of view based on an idea that, uh, uh, that, that basically came out of Brown versus Board of Education, that the attitude that some, for some reason that black children were disadvantaged if they did not have contact with white children. And that that contact with white children would uh, in fact uh, uh, change their value of education viewpoint. Uh, that uh, part of the issue was that African American children and their parents didn't value education as middle class white parents did. And by being somehow in contact with them through a process of osmosis or so forth, uh, that those values would rub off on, on black children and their parents and their education would improve. Uh, well, we felt that that was quite insulting. Uh, not only that, we, felt we thought it was completely ineffective that uh, the process of look doing whatever we could to improve the quality of education would mean that even if uh, you had uh, African American children in majority African-American schools, the, the quality of education was the issue, not whether or not uh, there were white children sitting next to black children. And so that was, that was the viewpoint of, um, of uh, the, the, the community members that I was associated with, and, and who are all African-American and white, and white parents, and other community members. So it was, it was, it was a fairly widespread uh, point of view that really only got stronger as the pink plan was put into place and you had magnet schools and so forth, and, and we can talk about that. You've mentioned a few times about um, sort of truth as that dividing line. Right. Um, how would you describe the different educational landscapes on one side and the other side of truth? Well, well I, I don't think there's a different educational landscape on either side. I mean, uh, at least as, as far as the Kansas City, Missouri School District at the time, Kansas City Public Schools now, it, 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 it goes east and west of truth. So it's the same school district. Uh, so, um, uh, but but what, what did occur and what um, has occurred on the west side is that parents on that side who are uh, more able to send their children to private schools or parochial schools did so. And so, um, uh, you know, I, 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 I worked for the Kansas City, Missouri School District for a period of time, and I'll, I'll talk about that. But uh, doing some demographic uh, estimates uh, in, a, in around the 2000s, uh, there was an estimate that only about 4% of the children who uh, lived west of Truce were actually attending the Kansas City Public School District. The others were, were in charter schools. 2000 charter schools had, had come in online in, in 1998. But also, well before that, there were private school and parochial school attendance. And so the educational landscape in, in terms of the public schools was the same. It, w it, w it was the same, but uh, there was a certainly a, a difference in attendance of public schools on the east east side versus the west side, and um, you know uh, I, I think many of those parents, many of those parents again are parents that I knew, and had contact with, and many of those parents took their children out of the public schools uh, because of the quality of education. These are parents, as I said. Uh, whose children had attended Bryan Elementary School, the school was doing well, and so they weren't trying to leave the district as long as the quality of education was, was fine. And many of those parents, uh, their children uh, went on to Lincoln uh, Middle School and Lincoln Prep, and my children did also. Uh, but those who uh, did not have that opportunity took their children out of the public schools. Uh, it, it's hard to tell. Uh, it, it's, it's hard for me to say, uh, being an activist um, on, uh, on the outside. Now, I, like I said, I, I did uh, do some work. I did work for the Kansas City, uh, Missouri School District in uh, 2001. And when I was inside, I had a different point of view than I had when I was you know, outside. But, but, but outside teachers, in fact, were, uh, were, were just doing what they were told. You know, and so uh, you know, I didn't. I didn't come across any teachers who thought that uh, integration was going to solve a problem. Uh, administrators were doing what they were told. 
Um, and um, I, I think, you know, when I, I can talk about my experience uh, from the inside, giving me some insight on why, uh, you know, there wasn't great enthusiasm for the process of integration among teachers or among administrators. The, the enthusiasm was really uh, tied to the, uh, to the, uh, the interests of the, of the plaintiff's attorney. I, 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 don't, I don't feel I contributed anything to school integration. It was, wasn't something that I was for. Um, um, and, and, and a distinction, I know there's a question here that, that uses the term desegregation. And there's, a, uh, there's a distinction between integration and desegregation. Uh, the idea, for example, that African American children should be prevented from going to any school they want to is something that is, uh, um, that, that I'm opposed to. It's, it's, it's anti-democratic, it's, uh, you know, uh, and so uh, d d fighting against desegregation, you know, bringing, bringing desegregation, uh, bringing segregation laws to an end, which would be desegregation, would be something I, I should support. Children should be able to go to whatever school they want to. But an idea of integration, which was what this lawsuit was about, which was a process of, of, of forcing, in a sense, parents to, to send their children to schools that um, had a certain racial mix, uh, was, was a disaster. Uh, it actually never occurred uh, in the sense that uh, most, uh, the majority, you know, you had, a, you had a school district that was 60 percent white, uh, roughly 40, uh, 35 uh, percent African American, about 5 percent Latino during that time. And, uh, you know, the, I, I mentioned that only about 4 percent of, of uh, white parents on the west of Jews had their children in the public school. They fled. And uh, even before that, then not only did they f flee uh, the district, but they fled the city to get away from the district. And so uh, the, the school district student population never um, um, reached uh, any integration uh, goals. I, I in fact, um, uh, had a business uh, from uh, 90, uh, 87 through 97 through most of this period. And um, I um, uh, was interviewed for a contract with the, uh, the desegregation office at the, at the, at the school district. And uh, one of the problems that they were having in, 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 in that interview was, you know, they would, they would bring about 400 parents, new parents, into the district. About every year they would recruit from the suburbs, uh, these parents. And uh, we, we all know about the, um, the use of uh, taxi cabs to bring these students into the district from, from far places. And they would, they would, every year they would recruit about 400 new students, and every year about 400 old students would leave. And so they, they never, they never uh, reached anything near the goal in desegregation of students. However, they were very successful at desegregating teachers and administrators. And um, at the time, uh, there was a, a uh, larger percentage of African American teachers and uh, in the district then will be represented by the population. And over time, the percentage of African-American teachers decreased as the percentage of white teachers uh, increased to try to reach that 60-40 uh, uh, population split. And they were very successful at doing that. And so uh, I, I do know that there were teachers who were, were uh, certainly African-American teachers who were upset about that process that they, and, and and not only that, there were there was uh, there was uh, much upset among parents, African American parents who uh, would have liked their children, for example, to go to a particular magnet school, but but they didn't have enough white students in that school, and so uh, they were not able to enroll because the school would be uh, disproportionately African American, and so and so that was a problem. Uh, so as as someone looking at it from the outside, as a parent, I can see. Uh, what was going on, and then in hindsight, looking back at what, what teachers were, were, were going through, uh, the, the process of integration was a disaster, and it never, never reached uh, any um, uh, appropriate level of quality of education uh, as a result either. So, so neither, neither goal, uh, the one that was promoted, which was integration, and the one that many community members wanted of qual in improving the quality of education, neither of those goals were achieved. My, my daughter, um, my, my children again, as I indicated, were, 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 were um, 
were students, and they were uh, students at Lincoln, uh, um, hi, uh, Lincoln High School, uh, middle school and high school. And I'm trying to recall the year my daughter would have been a, 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 a freshman. So that would have been perhaps uh, 88, 1988, um, at Lincoln uh, High School. And uh, the principal uh, of the high school, I forget her name, had decided not to observe Black History Month. Uh, coming from a point of view that in, this was an integrated school and no particular racial uh, cultural heritage should be uh, 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 validated or given more weight than, than, than any other. And uh, my daughter and others participated in a, in a sit-in over that incident. Uh, uh, they were extremely upset. Uh, as you know, or Lincoln High School has a, certainly a history of being a, a uh, uh, you know, has a cultural history in the African American community. The desegregation plan, the magnet school plan, was continuously moving to erase that history. But the students, yeah, certainly the African American students, uh, knew of, of, of that history at the time, and they thought this was unfair, and they protested. And eventually that, that, that principal was, was dismissed and moved somewhere else as a result of what, what students were doing. And, and so I can, I can tell you, at least at, at Lincoln uh, High School, African-American students were, were very um, upset about how at least uh, the process of integration was being administered by a, a, a principal at that school. Um, I, I don't have any particular experience with any other school, but I, but I do have that experience. Um, also during that time, um, um, I was uh, very much involved in uh, uh, developing and promoting uh, the African-centered uh, school. Uh, it started out as J.S. Chick in 1992 uh, uh, with an African-American theme, uh, excuse me, African-centered theme. And uh, the way that came about was, uh, you know, half of the elementary schools at the time, there were um, uh, 60 elementary schools in the district. And half the elementary schools were turned into magnet schools. The other half were uh, designated as traditional schools. And traditional school principals were upset about that process because there was additional funding that was going to be forwarded to the magnet schools, and they weren't going to get anything in addition. And uh, the response of the plaintiff's attorney of Arthur Benson at that time was, well, you know, uh, we're not going to give you any more money as a traditional school, but if you want to do some themes, some particular themes, magnet themes, you can go and you can do that on your own. And that, off, uh, that cre uh, uh, presented an opportunity for uh, parents who were looking to uh, engage in an African-centered curriculum to do so. We had actually started that process about 1987 of uh, parents uh, getting together to uh, think about what an African-centered curriculum would look like. We had some examples from Portland, Oregon, and some uh, persons like uh, Asa Hilliard and so forth that we were uh, connected to. And so we had been working for the, on that process for about five years. And in 1992, uh, we got an opportunity to do so. Um, uh, the, uh, Superintendent Garcia, uh, was, uh, was, uh, Garcia was the superintendent at the time, and we approached him about the process of, of set, uh, putting an African-centered uh, curriculum in place, and he was very supportive, very enthusiastic. In fact, he, he uh, you know, was also wanting an, a Hispanic-centered curriculum to be put in place, and so we, we offered to help the Hispanic community uh, to do so. That, that never, well, it never got, got, got done formally, but, but anyway, uh, J.S. Chick uh, was, was brought online as an African-centered school, and uh, I, I was uh, a member of that process, part of that process from um, before J.S. Chick all the way through to uh, um, when we had the uh, African-centered African uh, uh, collegium campus, which was, I was a member of the board of that, uh, of that school. And so uh, my part in, uh, in integration uh, was uh, to uh, try to improve the quality of education and to put in place um, a curriculum that would be responsive to uh, at the African-American community. Um, again, you know, going back on attitudes, one of the, one of the things that propelled uh, an attitude uh, against uh, the process of integration was when the magnet school plan was put in place, the themes that were put in place were, were those that had been surveyed among white parents. 
that is white parents were asked you know what what themes would you like what themes would bring you back to the district what themes would you see so we got you know classical greek and latin and these other kind, of kind of themes the african-american community was not surveyed in that process and so themes that were put in place were done without our our, uh, our input and, uh, and so uh, when the African-centered theme began at, at J.S. Chick, it was opposed by Arthur Benson. Uh, he uh, took us to court uh, to, to get our theme uh, eliminated. Uh, and uh, unfortunately for him, fortunately for us, the, the judge, it was Russell Clark at the time, agreed with, with our continuing with an African-centered theme because he was looking at the improvement in the, in the educational scores that were coming as a result of that process. And uh, even though he had ruled that you know, quality education wasn't a constitutionally, um, 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 wasn't uh, constitutionally mandated or constitutionally provided, uh, he also understood that one of the things that would be evaluated in dismissing a school district from a desegregation case was whether the achievement gap had been closed and uh, the African Center theme, uh, J.S. Chick had closed the achievement gap. And so uh, to uh, have us uh, it, you know, uh, 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 close that school or to, to move away from that theme, he thought would actually do harm to the district achievement gap. And so he agreed uh, that we would, would continue on. Well. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, I was um, uh, involved in what was called the African Center Task Force, eventually became a member of the board of um, the African Center Collegium Campus when we uh, grew that uh, J.S. Chick as an elementary school, grew into a middle school and then a high school process. Uh, and so, you know, my role was, as a, again, as a community activist, thinking about um, what, would, what would, one, improve the quality of education for African-American children, and two, uh, what would... Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, supporting a process that would, in fact, um, uh, be the opposite of what the Jenkins case was proposing. You know, I mean, not the Jenkins, well, the Jenkins case, but also Brown, the Brown case was proposing. That is, the only way that African-American students could get a quality education is if white students were sitting next to them. And in fact, this was something that Arthur Benson, in fact, said. Uh, he said that he knew of no instances of an all-black school that uh, was a quality school. Uh, he said that in spite of the fact that we had many years of quality uh, performance at J.S. Chick. And he said that as part of a, a, a suit, again, a, a subsequent suit against uh, the African Center theme, trying to get us um, uh, to, to, well, trying to get the theme eliminated. Um, and, so, and so my role, again, was as an activist. Um, by the time that J.S. Chick became and uh, uh, an African-centered school, my children had all graduated from the district, so I was no longer a parent, but I was, I continued to be, a, to be an activist in that process. Uh, the academic outcomes, as I, as I mentioned before, in that period of time, except for uh, the African-centered theme, uh, and, and there were some other exceptions, uh, but the academic outcomes for students was, was dismal. Um, uh, school performance was uh, declining, was, was getting worse in spite of the fact that you had magnet schools that were, that were uh, putting, put in place, uh, many with brand new buildings and, and so forth. And, and you know, the, the idea of having to replace the buildings for the district, I think, was, was a good one. Uh, you know, uh, it was necessary. It was more than a good one. It was absolutely necessary. And so if the desegregation case did anything good, it was to replace old buildings that were falling down with, with new buildings. However, it, it never was able to achieve anything academically. Um, it wasn't the focus, that is quality education was not the focus, and so there was, there was no uh, realistic um, uh, expectation that that would be an outcome simply by bringing white students into a district and replacing black teachers with white teachers. Um, uh, uh, so, um, trying to, let me see. So the academic outcomes, as documented, were 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 were, uh, were bad. Uh, just to extend this outside of that period, uh, you know, the Jenkins case was finally uh, settled, or or and well, maybe settled is not the right legal term. The district was released from the case in 2003, 
And uh, in 1995, when the case went up to the Supreme Court, uh, one of the things that came out of the, the, the what was called Jenkins III, the, the, the third case in 1995, was that uh, the district had to continue with, uh, well, was to, il to move out of the, the district was to move out of the, uh, the case, but the one hurdle that they had to overcome was to, to close the achievement gap. And so in uh, 2003, when that case was brought again for, for release uh, uh, with uh, Judge Whipple at the time, uh, the district, in fact, did get released because uh, when you looked at the, at the, uh, the, the, the data, the, the achievement gap had been closed, but it was a, a, a statistical artifact. Uh, what occurred, and, and I had um, worked, uh, again, worked for the Kansas City, Missouri School District from for a year in about 2001, 2002. So I, I had this data that was available, but uh, there was a consultant uh, uh, economics professor at, uh, uh, at MU that was hired to analyze this data. And he came to the same conclusion that I had already come to, was that the, the achievement gap uh, for the school district was closed because, of, uh, because most of the, uh, the, the higher achieving students had left the district to go to uh, uh, charter schools. And so, you know, those, those black and white students that were left in the district were basically uh, uh, having similar achievement issues. And so the gap wasn't closed because of anything that the district did. It was actually because uh, you had a, 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 a narrow range of performance of the students who remain, were remaining. Uh, and so, um, you know, the, the, the district was let out of the case, was released from the case, but it wasn't because of any closing the achievement gap that it, that it um, uh, attained. I, I think generally the, one, of the, one of the outcomes um, is, is a um, um, lack of focus on quality of education. Um, I, I, you know, you know I, I, I suppose there are, there are, we could talk about positive outcomes. Uh, there are, I think there are par perhaps are some. Uh, those uh, African-American students and white students who were able to, to sit in classrooms together uh, uh, began to understand each other a little better. Um, uh, but for, for most of them uh, who were um, not attending, let's say, a school like Lincoln Prep, or um, an African-centered school, and we, we had white and Hispanic students at the African-centered school, uh, not many, but we had some, or uh, who were, uh, let's say, going to Paseo uh, Performing Arts and could, uh, you know, get uh, some high-quality instruction in music and art that they could then take on to, to other places. Uh, for most of the schools uh, that were uh, either magnet or traditional schools, uh, the quality of education declined. I, I mentioned uh, my children went to, to uh, Bryant Elementary School, and it was a high-performing school until uh, the, the magnet school plan was put in place. Bryant was deemed a traditional school, so it wasn't a magnet school, and the quality of education declined um, after that period of time. Um, and, and so, um, uh, unfortunately, um, the, the, the quality, the level of the quality of education that we see in the, in the Kansas City Public Schools now is um, uh, continuous with the decline in the quality of education that occurred during, during the desegregation era, during this era uh, through 97. Uh, but, you know, we're talking about social outcomes. And so, uh, as I mentioned, yes, yeah, students did get together, get, get to, 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 um, to make friendships uh, with, with students of, uh, of other races. Uh, but, you know, my, my children, as I said, uh, went to Bryant Elementary. Uh, they went there before desegregation. They, they, they made friends with, with students of other racial and religious and ethnic backgrounds. And, uh, you know, we, we didn't need desegregation. Uh, in order to do that, and as I mentioned, um, uh, more white students, many more white students left and continue to leave. So the, the number of, of, of students who were, uh, white students who were participating in the district was, was very small mm -hmm. anyway. In what ways might school integration have shaped Kansas City communities? Um, as a hypothetical, right? 
uh, I suppose if uh, if um, I suppose a, a a a possible outcome would have been for um, you know uh, students to have gotten um, uh, a better understanding of other students and for that to have affected their parents uh, if their parents were for example were to participate in school uh, activities uh, with the PTA or the school advisory committee the SAC as it became uh, with uh, other parents across races then perhaps uh, there would have been a break a, a breaking down of the dividing line maybe even of the truth dividing line um, as a hypothetical but but of course that that never happened and it it, it wouldn't have happened because uh, uh, inherent in the process of, of, of trying to get uh, white students who had fled the district back into the district was such a focus on on um, um, integration that the focus on quality of education was lost and those white parents as I said from the, the magnet recruiting office who were leaving who were would come in for a year and were leaving were leaving because the quality of education was poor uh, they were promised uh, that uh, their their children would get a quote world class education, and uh, you know they didn't have to ride the bus. They could take a taxi cab from you know uh, from Grandview or or, or Raytown into or you know Lee Summit into the schools, uh, which uh, actually was I, I think discriminatory in itself. Uh, but they were promised that and they took advantage of that and after a year of being in the district they decided that things were better where they were where they had been and they left and so uh, the integration process itself contained some some um, 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 negative feedback loops if you will that would would in fact negate any positive outcomes that were possible in this process so I guess we could hypothetically talk about possible outcomes but they didn't occur because, you know, reality is, is what it is. Um, uh, I, I, I think we, should need, we need to focus on the children we have, right? Um, uh, you know, having, having a long experience in the African-centered process and uh, uh, what I would promote and what would I say? What I say would would achieve positive outcomes is to bring back, uh, what is to infuse uh, within the curriculum a a uh, heavy dose of, of an African-centered philosophy. Now that doesn't mean that that uh, you know, everything has to be s centered into uh, you know an African experience. African-centeredness doesn't doesn't exclude. Hispanic centeredness. It doesn't exclude even European centeredness. It's not an Afrocentrism. It's not a Africa and, and everything else is secondary. But it is an idea that students, all students, need to be focused in their history and culture, their own history and culture. And if those things are different, then, then they get an idea uh, of being focused in their different histories and culture. But they need to be centered so that they can go, they can go out into the world as whole people not uh, persons who are uh, denigrating or you know, discounting their own experience and validating and, and valorizing others' experience. And so you know, part of that process is, is for students, and, and if we're talking about African-American students, uh, is for students to understand that, uh, uh, one, uh, their lives, uh, that the history of African-Americans didn't start when they were captured in Africa and enslaved and brought to this country. There's a, there's a very long history of, of success and progress for those of African descent, as there is for all people, right? There's a history, and so for African-American students to understand that, it, it, it's, it's more than just a, a self-esteem issue. It's, it's an idea of knowing that what is possible for Africans to achieve is also possible for them to achieve because it's part of their, their heritage. Uh, and so there is a, now, you know, now, now that's, that's, a, that's an ethical and, and a moral, I guess, position. But there's also the techniques and, uh, and approaches that uh, w would be available for African-centered, in the African-centered school. Understanding that uh, school and uh, you know, educating children takes a community effort. And so uh, one of the things that the African-centered schools were, were uh, very much involved in 
was a process of making sure that each student got everything that they needed in order to be successful. Understanding that children come into a uh, into school with from from differing places, uh, some some children come to school with, you know, ready to ready to go. You know, they've eaten breakfast that morning, they had a good night's sleep, uh, they had a good experience yesterday. Uh, they have, uh, you know, uh, parents in the home who are concerned about them. Uh, some children come to school with none of that. And if children come to school with none of that, then it's the responsibility of the community through the school to provide those things for them. And, you know, okay, we provide school lunch programs, but, um, but the child may not have had dinner the, the, the day before, may not have dinner that night. And so is it possible for them to go home with, with some food that would be provided by a food bank so their children, so their, their families can eat? Well, if you're not actively involved in the life of that child uh, through their parents, then you don't know that. But one of the things that the African Center School would always do would be to keep, to keep close contact with the families of the children. Uh, you know, you, you, don't, you can't educate that child just as a, a, an independent entity from their, from their parents. And so you have, to be, you have to understand that they come from families. And you give support to families. And perhaps they don't have, uh, if children don't have uh, uh, parents at home who are able to help them with their homework because they're uh, working late or because uh, the level of, of homework, uh, of work that's required is something that they're, you know, that they didn't get to, uh, you know, mastery of when they were students in the school district, you know, so there's this cycle. Uh, then uh, you, you need to have con connection with uh, people in the, in the community who could come into the school and do tutoring. And uh, you, you can also do t peer tutoring where older students who have mastered lessons can, can can uh, tutor uh, younger students who haven't mastered lessons. I mean, there, there are all kinds of things that you can do and that you would do if you understood that these children are not deficient, uh, they're not defective, they just haven't had the opportunity, uh, many of them haven't had the opportunity to learn as much as others have, and you give them that opportunity to learn uh, in, in whatever way you can so that you know, they, can, they, can, they can achieve what they can achieve. Uh, uh, Aza Hilliard would, would say students are learning all the time. Uh, they may not always be learning the things you want them to learn, but they're learning all the time. And so it's our responsibility as educators and as adults to put them into situations where they are going to learn the things we want them to learn. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us about school integration in Kansas City? Yeah, I, I think so. I mentioned I worked for the Kansas City, Missouri School District in uh, 2001, 2002, and that's a little bit outside of the, of the time period. But I, I, I uh, took a position as what was called the uh, administrative officer with uh, the then superintendent, Bernard Taylor, at the time. And I, I, I was uh, asked to serve in that position because the superintendent was, in fact, being bullied on a number of levels, and I don't, I don't, um, I won't go into the details, but uh, as it references desegregation, when I became a, a part of the superintendent's cabinet, I, w I was struck by the fact that other members of, of his cabinet, other mem uh, you know, um, uh, uh, high-level administrators, were were hamstrung and um, you know, uh, actually in fear of doing anything to address issues that might actually improve the education of children because it might be against the wishes of the plaintiff's attorney in the desegregation case. Uh, what, what became apparent was that the district was being run by lawyers instead of by educators. And it wasn't simply the plaintiff's attorney who was the, the opposing counsel, it was also the, the, the attorney for the Kansas City, Missouri School District who was uh, basically acquiescing to anything that the plaintiff's attorney would ask for or want to do in order to avoid having to go to court and probably you know, losing their motion. And so uh, the, 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 uh, the um, district's attorney, in fact, uh, was involved in uh, suppressing whatever academics, or whatever the, uh, the administrators would want to do uh, so as not to offend the courts or offend the plaintiff's attorney. Uh, the district was, was, was operating in fear and, and I made mention of that in my first cabinet meeting. In fact, um, 
there was a situation with the principal at Northeast High School. And what that principal was doing was uh, when uh, migrant construction worker, uh, the students whose parents were migrant construction workers, would come into the district late, you know, they're, they're coming from another location and they're coming to, to enroll in the district, but maybe a, a month or two late, the principal was turning them away and saying, you have to go to another school. And everyone was upset about the fact that she was, uh, it was a she, I believe, turning them away. Uh, she was, in fact, uh, you know, in violation of district policy. But I asked the question in that cabinet meeting of why this was occurring, and everyone was dumbfounded that even the question would be asked, asked because none of the administrators would ever ask that question. They were, they were, they were afraid of doing so. And, uh, you know, no one could answer or no one wanted to answer. And I said, well, maybe perhaps she's afraid of something. Uh, you know, I take, you know, part of my, 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 my thinking, the way I think about things comes from the work of uh, W. Edwards Deming, who was a, a, a master of uh, what's called uh, quality management. And what Deming would, would, would argue is that every organization had to drive fear out of its, of its, of its process, but it, that if fear is in an organization, the organization is paralyzed. No one will do anything or stick their neck out to do anything. So I asked, what was she afraid of? And everyone said, no, no, she's not afraid of anything. And I said, well, wait a minute. Now, now what happens when these migrant students come into her school and then they take the MAP test uh, the next year, and they do very poorly because they're migrant students, they haven't, uh, they've missed a couple of months of school, and they're probably behind, the test scores go down. Well, that's, that, that, that principal had been threatened with being fired if she didn't get the test scores up. And so she was doing whatever she needed to do to make sure that whatever she could control in test scores would not, would not, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, would not lead to a, a bad outcome. And, and so, you know, she was, she was operating in fear and uh, other administrators in the district were operating in fear. And, and there were some instances, I won't go into particulars, of programs that I and some other administrators who are a little more innovative proposed to the district and actually did work and research in that the district did not um, 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 uh, go through with because the district's attorney had advised them that if we did this, then the plaintiff's attorney might not agree. And so, you know, you had, you had programs involving, for example, alternative school students that did not move forward uh, because uh, the district, or, well, the plaintiff's attorney, excuse me, the district's attorney was afraid that the plaintiff's attorney would, would oppose it. And the superintendent who had initially authorized and agreed with going uh, with these alternative school programs when confronted by the district's attorney about this possible outcome, then said no, he was no longer supportive of it. And so the district really could do nothing except what the, the, the plaintiff's attorney wanted it to do. And all the plaintiff's attorney, the, the only plan that the plaintiff's attorney had was to integrate the schools, and that was long gone in, in terms of a possibility by 2000. And so nothing, nothing innovative in terms of education was being done. And, and, and so, you know, I, I, I had experience as an outsider, as a parent, and as an activist, but now I had a year's worth of experience as an insider, and uh, things were, uh, I won't say worse than I expected, but certainly uh, very consistent with the outcomes in terms of the district in term in edu education. And, and, I, and I see that process continuing on. It, 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 it hasn't stopped. Um, even though the case is gone in 2003, uh, there's, there's still a lack of, um, of, of initiative. Uh, there's still a, a, um, a, a, an atmosphere of fear among administrators and among teachers, though they're, they're afraid to do anything lest the superintendent would, um, would um, and, and the board would, would have some negative feedback for them. Um, you, 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 you can never improve a situation if you're afraid to do anything new. Uh, the old, th old thing is not working.